year placement, so I went to Uni of Nottingham, and my third year project was called A Grafted Belief. It was a, um, it is a multi-faith community centre um, with an integrated food donation space and a homeless shelter. Um, and the kind of the motto that I put with my project was towards a universalist future. Um, so I'll explain that. In, yeah. So. Um, the main, the, the main thing I wanted to do is to basically challenge traditional religious practice and conventional religious architectural design. So myself, I'm completely non-religious, so for me this was, I have no bias towards you know, any particular religion, so it's a really good grounding to start on. So I did a lot of research, which is in one of my books just on this table here. Um, and the thing that I found interesting was the contrasting views between uh, religious exclusivism and universalism. So exclusivism is where one believes that if you're from any other religion that you're eternally doomed. And obviously this is generally seen as really old-fashioned view. So my research and my project is all for people willing to accept a universalist future, accepting anyone, whether they're religious or non-religious. So this is basically, before I did anything, I wanted to create a visual <coughs> almost like concept generator. So this is a hand-drawn sketch I did, and it's basically integrating, um, oh sorry, another thing, it's based in Coventry. Um, so the, um, all these little pieces are kind of inspiration from uni universalist views and um, from the city of Coventry. So um, the first thing we did, um, our unit, I was actually with Connor, he was in my unit as well, and our unit massively focused on the culture and the context, and the history of the people and um, short narratives. So uh, this map was basically, throughout the research, when I realized I wanted to focus on religion, I was mapping the kind of the key religious uh, zones in Coventry, um, and more centrally, uh, the religious monuments. Um, and then that is the chosen site in the middle. So um, another thing that I found in third year, I found that I got really like, interested in urban design, so that was my elective module as well. And Coventry was really interesting because obviously it's, it's everyone knows it for being destroyed in the war, um, completely blitzed, had to be re rebuilt. And when we went on site visits, um, it was, because I never really took a good look at um, churches and things like that, even on holiday, like when my parents were dragging me around, I was like, oh, it's another cathedral. But in third year, and I think once I kind of realized what I was interested in, this is when realised all the symbolism and everything from religious architecture I found amazing. So the black um, the black portions that you can see are around the site, they are the key religious monuments that I almost want to kind of resurrect, like bring back of the historical parts of Coventry. Um, and then the smaller black kind of dot, that is very important to my scheme that you'll see coming up. So that is a little black dot. So that is Greyfriars Fire. It was originally um, a monastery, then it was um, destroyed, and there's so much history behind it, and it, it was so interesting to see how the shape of the church, um, sorry, the shape of the building actually had an influence on how people moved around the area as well. So the large building, the large circular building is actually um, found, found out that it was a swimming pool that's currently being built. And although I'm sure it's got a great reason for being there, it was really sad because it was such a nice piece of commentary and it was just lost in this construction. And as you can see the views, it, it's hidden. And I think one of the things that I really wanted to bring back was a really important, just a little fragment that people kind of noticed as a part of their own city. So it might be somewhere where you, you know, when you meet the friend, where you meet your friends. So I'll meet by, you know, at the normal meeting place. And it's, it's one of the three main spires in Coventry, so it's a landmark that I wanted to resurrect. Um, so this is just, I did a lot of research and one of the really interesting parts was a survey I did. So basically I got about 200 responses and because I was so worried about it being such a controversial issue, this is why I put it out. And the basically I was asking whether people were more concerned, religious people, um, whether they were more concerned about the physical parts of um, a space or the more spiritual parts of their religious space. And it turned out that a lot of people were much more interested in sharing the facilities of their religions. And it, it was really nice because it, you know, I had the grounding and this just, it meant my idea could fly with real backing uh, from the research. 
Okay, so um, I found it really hard to go into strange architectural ideas, so I started with really simple, basically just mark making. I knew that I wanted um, a series of kind of oases connected with some sort of journey, and this is basically the geometry that I just set out using ink and pen. And um, in some other development books down there, you can see how that really, the ideas from here really show in the final piece as well. So all of those ideas, what do I do with them? Put it all together into one big sketch. So that's literally what it is. And this kind of shape <coughs> is basically um, showing you the, my final idea, but in the simplest form. So the, um, the tall part at the beginning symbolizes the old spire, the great fire spire, and this tall part at the end symbolizes my new spire, which is meant to reflect the old. Um, so the old and the new, basically. Um, this is basically shows a development of my sketches. I wanted to somehow make these um, mark making things into basically a form. And this just shows, these are the key sketches I had. Um, it's very different, but um, I think that was, for me, that was really important between having your initial kind of creative idea and putting it into like a, a massing. So this is kind of the key sketch I did before I went into detail before I went into structure. So it shows atmosphere, it shows the journey that I wanted to create from the old to the new. Um, it has key views that I wanted looking back at the spire. And another part of the research that was really interesting was that there are so many nature-based religions, I had no idea. So many of them are based on water and greenery. So as you carry on through this journey, you can see nature starting to creep in and that becomes a really major part of the whole scheme. Um, so this was, Basically, a, um, it was a concept model made in plaster and um, later cut parts painted. And that, again, follows the same journey but makes it more of a form, makes it more of an idea. So you're starting with the kind of rectangular, the solid masonry spire, and then you're and bringing that somehow, looking at different connections, different routes into this final spire, um, which I knew I wanted to be more lightweight, more modern, more um, almost noticed as a new land landmark in Coventry. Um, this is a model that is just down there as well. So um, when I did want to look at how I was going to challenge kind of conventional architecture, I would look at things like arches. Everyone knows an arch is associated with um, you know, Gothic cathedrals. There's all sorts. Um, and there's also like Christian, Islamic. There's so many different types. So this was just my little kind of play on, I was looking at suspended arches as opposed to kind of structural from the ground. So um, just little twists that would make it seem different but it would still give you that kind of that vertical awe that you get when you walk into a space. And this was actually, this was a side project, um, Integrated Design of Architecture. So we, our task was to do something that, it was a separate project but that we could see it being visualised in our scheme. So mine was intimate marks, scars and surfaces and how the wear and tear of materials and the wear and tear of things that we just like doorknobs that get rusted and um, remote controls that the buttons like wear away at the time like how they they tell small stories but it's those little stories that you know they build up um, they're more meaningful to us than a brand new phone or a, you know a brand new chair so this is basically a clay lampshade that I made and I <coughs> It was meant to be a lamp, so basically it was a lampshade and I integrated a kind of a graphite um, uh, wire, painted wire, that was when you touch it in a very kind of intimate, specific way, it would turn the light on. And it worked, so it was, uh, to, my, to my knowledge, it was, it was successful. Um, these are the plans, so I know they're quite faint, um, however, I will briefly talk about them. So. The thing that I hope you can see is the, the way that the greenery comes in. I think that's the main thing that the plans really do show and it tells the story that I'm showing through my research and through all the concept sketches. So um, the project goes below ground and it has the two places that are above ground are at the start and the end. So it's having that kind of sense of, you know, you're moving, you're really moving through a story and you're experiencing all these like sensory spaces. So for example, the, actually, Okay, so this is, I just picked out like a, key feet, a, a few key parts. So this is the, a lower ground floor. It's um, 
this is where the homeless shelter kind of haven is integrated. So the idea is that the ground floor is really kind of, um, it's really open to the urban environment, the landscape design, the ground floor, the ground floor is this top left. So all of the urban design and the water features, the angles and the, the way I've tilted things, um, it's all meant to be so you have your private spaces and you have backing so you feel safe when you're in that public space and then you can always choose to go to these little niches or choose to go in these um, uh, semi-private areas which you might meditate in or have a contemplative space. So this is where things like the cleansing room, um, there were cleansing rooms, there were children's spaces, there was main prayer halls um, and all of these were meant to be all religions, um, <coughs> non-religious people and the idea is that you get to observe everyone, everyone is open to seeing um, you know, everyone's um, different practices. So yeah, just explain that. So this is the so-called killer image. This basically shows the scheme. It shows, so that is obviously Grey Fry's Spire and the way that I brought that kind of the built heritage and the context into the scheme was having it brought back, not as a religious, not seen as a religious, um, you know, Christian symbol, but just as a piece of commentary brought back to bring the community together and offer that grand entrance that you do get when you go into a space of awe. Um, you can see how the structure changes, it goes from solid masonry into lightweight um, timber and that kind of followed the idea that I wanted to create that journey from um, the heavy, the old, um, into the fresh, the light, the new. Um, and then, I don't know if you can just make out the kind of the light shine that goes back, so that symbolises the view back to the old spire. Um, and the idea is that you come down, you come up the new spire, and then you're looking back across the scheme. That's just a axo. Um, so this is the main foyer space, you come in, it has like the hints of, con of conventional architecture, however it does also have like the new, the modern, this is where the food donation space would also be. This is where, um, on the ground floor in the urban environment, where nature would offer you a semi-private space, however it would also, um, you know, you'd be able to see what was going on, everyone has people watching, that sort of thing's really important in for urban designers, landscape architects, so um, yeah, that was a really nice kind of thing to design. And then this was basically the final view when you're at the top of the new nature spire. You're, you have that framed view, it's like the final destination. You've gone through this journey, whether it's a religious journey or a non-religious one, or you might just be observing what's happening in the building. You've come to the top and you're looking back at the piece of Coventry that was destroyed and has now been resurrected and brought back to life. And just a quick thing, um, all of this was based on the fact that Nowadays, there's so much hate crime and there's so much negativity towards certain religions and it's, um, it's horrible to see, it's completely unnecessary. So this is just my little take on a way to kind of bring a community together. Yeah.